Good morning. Thank you for joining us on this Trinity Sunday and Memorial Day weekend. We begin our service on the front page of our bulletin. Is that not on? The Old Testament today is from the prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 29, and we'll read it in unison. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. 
Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kaddish. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Our epistle reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you, are put, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one descended from heaven, the Son of Man. 
And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of our Lord. All right, we think we got the microphone worked out with a replacement. So, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Trinity Sunday is the one feast on the church calendar that's dedicated to a doctrine rather than to an event or an individual. Priests and pastors often consider this to be one of the more difficult days to preach, and it's made especially hard because the idea we're meant to celebrate neither does nor can make any logical sense. The thought that one God can function as three distinct persons, not simply appearing as different modalities or expressions of themselves at different times and places, yet all the while still remaining one singular God has baffled and confounded some of humanity's greatest minds for more than two, well, not more than, but close to 2,000 years. Yet that's the best way that anyone has figured out to describe certain instances in the New Testament, like Jesus' baptism, where we experience God individually as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit at the same moment. One thing that is three separate things, each of which are entirely, in fact, the one thing, yet all of which are both individually and collectively the one thing itself, is probably the ultimate paradox a riddle against which the ocean of human thought will continually crash and yet will wholly endure beyond the day that even the thought of thought completely wears itself away. So if you don't get the Trinity, you're in good company. No one ever has, and it's pretty much certain that no one ever will. God's being is one of the foundational mysteries of Christianity. As soon as we think we have a grasp on it, we need to have the humility to recognize that we are, in fact, undoubtedly and completely wrong. Beyond the challenge of the Trinity itself, there's a certain amount of danger in how we tend to embrace particular doctrines. Church doctrines are long-standing, well-thought-out teachings meant to help people more easily comprehend certain realities about God. Doctrine, as a generally stabilized form of theology, can be a very good and helpful thing. But the problem arises when we begin to look at doctrines as absolute answers to theological questions, as perfect realities in and of themselves. What someone must know, or the way an individual is required to think if they want to be a genuine Christian. We as the church have a long history of doing this, of deciding who's in or out with God and who we can or need to love or hate, who we can rightly discriminate against, who we can kill and who we can permanently bind from God's kingdom. But none of that is either the function of the church nor consistent with Christianity itself. It's just human beings self-justifying our own pride and prejudice. 
our inborn attachment and allegiance to empire or the flesh, with its gift of power, influence, and certainty in one's own desire, all under the false face of God. Despite what we may have been taught, being a Christian is not based on the ideas about God to which you assent or what you hope you correctly understand about the supernatural world. It isn't defined by your mental acuity or any particular line of philosophical dogma. Being a Christian is rooted entirely in following Jesus. It's about living, about turning to God again and again, about caring for and serving the people around us, about demonstrating our love for God, sometimes through the course of what we've learned, but often in spite of what we might think or how we might feel or the way we might understand things ought to be. It's actively and preemptively treating your neighbor as you long for others to treat you. Being a Christian is a physical, not a potential intellectual or imagined reality. It is a lived imitation of Christ. It's not just considering, debating, or embracing certain ideas about God. Christianity actually involves doing what Jesus did. Caring for the poor, welcoming the outcast, standing against abusive practices, protecting and restoring other people to and even past the point of risking your own self, your soul, for the sake of someone else. Does that mean that we don't need to think about God or that we shouldn't pay attention to particular teachings or doctrines? Not at all. Think as much as you want. Study as much as you can. Take advantage of the work others have done before you in attempts to understand and comprehend the what's and why's of Christian life. Contemplate the how's until they've embedded themselves within your own being. Do everything possible to learn and love and dream more about God. Let that learning guide your daily activity. But never let any of those ideas get in the way of living for and especially like God. Our ideas about God are important, but only in the way that they lead us into action. If a teaching or thought helps you actually and physically live a Christ-like life, that is great. But if it's preventing you from action or otherwise getting in your way, it's okay to toss it. If something that I say doesn't direct you along the pathway of love for God, making itself real by compassion for and service toward your neighbor, then ignore it. If contemplating the Trinity leads you into anything other than awe for God's impossible majesty, coupled with a desire to share that wonder and love with others, then stop wasting your time and energy thinking about it. Instead, go out and live. Live as the body of Christ, somehow still incarnate in the world. Live in the power and energy of the Spirit that animates us. Live as God's own soul, God's united body and breath, in and for and throughout this world that God so loves. Live like the Father, providing life and sunshine and rain and sustenance to everyone, both those who recognize and those who reject their Creator. Live like the Son, loving your enemies, blessing those who curse you, doing good to those who hate you, and praying for those who despitefully use you. Live like the Spirit, pouring out the fullness of its presence and gifts upon all flesh, 
in spite of perceived worthiness. As Christians, we are called to live like God, to love like God, to serve like God. So yes, we look to God, and we most certainly should look to God. But never use anything that I or any other human might say or think about God as an excuse to avoid living Jesus' one commandment that sums up all others. To love. Amen. Having heard the word of the Lord, let's stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and Michael Hun, our diocesan bishop, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, and Michelle, our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of their bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Chuck, Stephen, Leah, Kirk, Will, Abe, 
Chrissy, Witt, Oliver, Nathaniel, Sarah, Jessica, Will and family, Mary, Clark, Reed and Judy, Amy, Phil, Al, Carolyn and Susan, Maria, Jan, Dwayne, Keith, Corey, H.D. and Michael. Are there others? And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Hazel Logan, Mike Sakala, Adam Becker, Hilda Slagel, Winston and Louise Banks, and Stacy Morrow. Are there others? Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Andrew, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Taking a moment for reflection, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. Once again, good morning. Thank you for joining us on this Trinity Sunday, which is occurring this year on Memorial Day weekend. Um, as usual, we have multiple announcements. If you have not yet picked up one of these yellow sheets of paper, uh, the ushers have those available at the back. You can grab one after the service. It'll tell you a bunch of things that are coming up and some things that are going on this week. 
Uh, today, one thing that is not on the list but is happening is right after this service, we're going to have a gathering in the courtyard space over there by the Wall of Honor, um, where we'll have a brief set of prayers in honor of Memorial Day. So please do join us for that. Um, let's see, it looks like we have some extra announcements. Table with all the goodies, um, all the sales go to the Mustard Seed Baby's Home. There's a slideshow going on on the TV. Sharon, tell them what, what that's about. Um, the slideshow is, is pictures from this, this time and the time before. In on it, you'll see pictures of chickens. Um, and part of what I did when I was there was I purchased chickens, which are called layers. And so that will, instead of buying them eggs, I bought them chickens so that they could continually have eggs. And there is a note, a letter outside by it that is a letter from Reverend James, who is from the baby's home, thanking this congregation for that. And I appreciate your support and your help. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. You've been so generous. Thank you. We do have that thank you letter posted on a couple of the bulletin boards around the church, and I believe there are some loose copies on the table over in the gathering space, the big long one, uh, so you could read that note of thanks as well. All right, next thing to point out is that on June 16th, after the service, we're going to be having a congregational meeting. This is something that all of the churches in our diocese are going to be doing in the course of this summer. Um, it's a way to kind of look at where we are, where we'd like to go, not just as a local congregation, but as the entire diocese. So we'd encourage you to stick around for that. It's supposed to take about 90 minutes. It involves conversation around four questions, and that again happens after our 9.30 service on June 16th. Beyond that, uh, regular weekly activities except for Tuesday. Tuesday, the office will be closed in honor of Memorial Day. However, Deacon Ann has told me that they will still be having morning prayer at 9.30 over in the Kendrick Chapel. The doors over here are going to be locked, so please enter through the parish hall if you would like to join in morning prayer on Tuesday. Wednesday, the women's breakfast continues as usual, just up the street at Bite of Belgium at 9 o'clock in the morning. On Thursday, our men's group meets to uh, have breakfast together also at Cholitos up on Foothills Road past Target, and that takes place at 8 o'clock on Tuesday mornings. At noon, we have our Healing Eucharist in the Kendrick Chapel on Thursdays, and Thursday evening, this will be our last Kids Quest of the school year. Uh, and that takes place over by the gathering space at 5 o'clock. Uh, everyone age 10 and up is welcome to attend. Well, being a kid, 10 to 20-ish. <laughs> so, all right. Um, as a regular reminder, please do know that it is OK to disagree with me. If you have any kind of problems, questions, or concerns, please do talk to me directly. Um, we can't resolve problems if we don't know that they're existing. So please do uh, feel free to let me know if there's something that's bothering you. All right, do we have anyone who would like to come forward for a birthday or anniversary blessing? Oh, I see someone. Birthday, Sylvia. All right. A big birthday. Are you willing to share what that big birthday is? You don't have to. Really? Do you want me to say that out loud? 85. So <laughs> that is a big birthday. <laughs> you never know. You've got to be careful, especially with ladies and ages. <laughs> so. Our birthday prayer is found on page 830 of your Book of Common Prayer. Page 830, prayer number 51. Please join me as able. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up if she falls, and in her heart, 
May thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, Sylvia. I hope you have a great week. Now we continue with our offertory sentence. Through Christ, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. But do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. For with thy co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, thou art one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of substance. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of thee, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction 
for the sins of the whole world. And at Institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, According to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable, innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. 
Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Christ, bread of heaven. But Christ, bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, bread of heaven. The body of Christ, bread of heaven. The body of Christ, bread of
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Please do remember to join us in the courtyard area for our Memorial Day prayers. <laughs> 